Hey everybody, it's Mr. Carr again. Today we're going to be talking about 6C, graphing linear inequalities. Okay, so to start, let's define that. So linear inequality is an inequality that uses two variables. Okay, usually x and y. Okay, and I don't like how I wrote that, x and y, so let's put a little more space there, usually x and y. Okay, so what that means when we graph this, since we're using two variables, we are actually going to graph in four possibilities. Okay, the graphing of these, here's the thing that, here's the big key on these. If I look at these, okay, I'm just going to fill these in here, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, okay? So when I look at these, you're actually going to treat these a lot like the equation y equals 2x minus 3. In fact, that's the first thing we're going to do. We are going to graph the line y equals 2x minus 3. So you need to think back to what we did back in, let's see here, this is unit 4 now. Okay, <clears throat> so we're graphing in slope-intercept form. We know we're crossing at the point 0, negative 3, and that's my slope of 2 over 1. So that's my rise over run. So in all four of these cases, they're going to be the same thing. We're just going to kind of repeat each of, <clears throat> each of the things with that. So to start with this first case here, we got minus 3, so 1, 2, 3. Oops. Okay, there's my y-intercept. Positive 2 over 1 is going to go up 2 to the right 1, and I can go up to the right 1, and then so on. Okay. The thing about a linear, linear inequality is that you notice that there's two variables as part of our inequality. There's an x and a y value that go in here. So that means I can plug in a lot of different numbers to make this work. Okay. So what happens, though, is this, if it's less than and not less than or equal to, Here's the thing that's going to happen. I'm going to use a dashed line for a less than symbol. Okay, same thing is going to happen for the greater than symbol. So if I start at the same one, two, three, okay, and I go up two to the right one, okay, that's also going to get a dashed line. So less than or greater than, oops, said that wrong less than or greater than gets a dash line. Okay, that's our big key. For less than, so we want to figure out when is, what numbers would create this as a true statement. Like what would make this less than all of this? Okay, so I think a lot of people will look at this. If I say less than, I think a lot of people would look and be like, oh, it's all this. Okay, less than seems to be it's going to go under the line. That I feel like makes sense. Here's where you can be absolutely sure. Pick a test value. So for example, I'm gonna pick an easy one, like zero, zero. I like using the test value because it's pretty, it's a pretty easy way to make sure you're shading the right area, okay? So I'm gonna plug in the point zero, zero in for X and Y. So zero is gonna be less than two times zero minus three. So is zero less than zero minus three, zero less than negative three. This is false, okay? So since I got a false statement here, this is not a solution, okay? Zero, zero, my test value. I tested out the zero, zero. I came out to a false statement. Zero, zero is not a part of the solutions. Instead, it's gonna be, if I think about it this, this way right here, here's my line. This is not a solution. That means jump to the other side of the line. This is my solution area or my solution set, okay? What that means is any point that I pick out of that shaded region will work for this, okay? So for example, let's go orange. If I pick like right here, five, zero, okay? So if I do that, I got zero less than two times five minus three. 0 less than 10 minus 3, 0 less than 7. Okay, that works. That's true. That's what all of these represent. Any point that I pick in that shaded region that's not on the line, okay, it's a dashed line. It cannot be on the line itself. 
I'm going to get a true statement here. Anything that's in the non-shaded region is going to come out to a false statement. That's what makes these inequalities true or false. They have to be um, they have to be true for the whole thing through when I plug in both an X and a Y value. Okay, so when I look at the next uh, next one, Y is greater than two X minus three. I can do the same process. Okay, if I'm unsure, I'm going to pick a test point like this zero zero, and then I'm going to plug it in. Is zero right over here? Zero greater than two times zero minus three. So zero greater than zero minus three is zero greater than negative three. That is a true statement. Since that's a true statement, this is a part of the solution set, meaning this is my shaded region on this side of the line. Okay, so anytime you pick a test value and always pick it so it's not on the line, you just either shade the same region if you come out to a true statement or shade the opposite area if it comes out to a false statement. Okay, so that's where we're, it's two options. Okay, for the next one, the only difference now is that a less than or equal to sign is gonna get a solid line. So less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, I'm gonna draw that just like I did in unit four. They're a solid line, okay? So one, two, three, up to the right one, and so on, and then a solid line. Okay, and then one, two, three. All right, so solid lines for both of those. Same thing as before. If you wanna do a test value, you can do a test value. Make it easy, make it easy. Just make sure it's not on the line, okay? So if I pick zero, zero, I can test that one out. You're gonna find that in this case, for the less than or equal to, that would be a false statement. So that's my shaded region. Same thing with the greater than or equal to, this will be my shaded region here. Okay. Now, the one thing that you get from this that's a little bit different because of the solid line, anything on the line is actually a solution as well. So for example, if I picked zero, negative three, so if I try out the zero negative three, and I plug that in. So that's negative three less than or equal to two times zero minus three. Negative three less than or equal to zero minus three is negative three less than or equal to negative three. Yes, it's the or equal to section. So this is a true statement, okay? So when I have the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, then I get a little extra, little extra solutions there. It's everything on the line as well as the shaded region, okay? All right, so when we do this, so we, our goal is to find the area to shade. That's what we're trying to find. That's what represents our solutions here. Before we did just like a line. We did a number line and we represent all the possible numbers in one direction or the other no direction as our solutions. Now it's a shaded region under this slanted line. So that's what we're looking at here. So don't forget from unit four, make sure the equation is solved for Y. And then we also have to make sure we shade. There's two things, okay? So for part A, Y is less than three X minus seven. So I'm gonna start with graphing at the point zero negative seven. My slope is a three over one. So I've got zero negative seven, and then one, two, three, one, one, and then I'll go one, two, three, I'll go one more. Okay, <clears throat> since this is a less than symbol, okay, we got less than here, this is going to get a dashed line. Okay, if you feel confident <clears throat> about your shading ability, you might be able to see that, oh, it should be down here. <clears throat> less than will be going below the line. If you're not as confident, pick a test value. So, for example, zero, zero again. Okay, so if I plug that in, zero less than three times zero minus seven is zero less than zero minus seven and is zero less than negative seven. That is a false statement. So that means this was not a part of it, so I should have shaded the other side anyway. So that works out. So a couple other questions, some follow-ups. Okay, <clears throat> is the point four or five a solution? So I go to four or five, so one, two, three, four three, four, five. 
Well, let's see here. One, two, three, one. So this one is actually on my dashed line. So no, this is not a solution, okay? It's on the dashed line. Okay, so if it's on a dashed line, it's not a solution. It has to be in one of the shaded areas. If I look at the next point, negative five, two, that's over here. Well, that's definitely a no. It's no because it's not in the shaded region. Okay, so it either has to be on a solid line or in the shaded region to be considered a solution. All right. Uh, next one, x minus 2y is greater than or equal to negative 6. So we want it first solve for y. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to do that by subtracting x to both sides. So we read it up here. we got negative 2y greater than or equal to negative x minus 6. Divide everything by a negative 2. So that y. And here's the thing we've got to remember from before. We are, because we divide by a negative, flip that sign. So y is less than or equal to one half x plus three. Okay, so I'm gonna cross at the point zero three, and my slope is one over two. So I can go up one to the right two, or I can go down one to the left two. Because it's a less than or equal to sign, it is going to be a solid line. From there, if I feel good about my uh, graphing, I feel like the less than or equal to means it's going to go below the line. But again, if you're unsure, do a test value. So I'm going to test out zero, zero. Okay, so if I test zero, zero, does zero minus two times zero, is that greater than or equal to negative six? So we got zero minus zero greater than or equal to negative six, zero greater than or equal to negative six. That is a true statement. So my shaded region is including the zero, zero. All right, is the point four, five a solution to the system? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. It's this one. It's on a solid line, so that's a yes. It's on a solid line. Okay, zero, two, right here. Okay, yes, it's in the shaded region. Okay, so again, the only thing that makes it a solution is if it's in, a in the shaded region or on a solid line. If it's not in the shaded region and it's not in the dashed, or if it's on a dashed line, those are not solutions. Okay, so that is 6C here. We are graphing linear inequalities that has two variables with it. So it creates these lines. And so we have to make sure we graph it as a y equals mx plus b and then shade the proper area. Okay. And then we also want to understand what makes solutions. Solutions are in the shaded area um, or on the solid lines. The non-solutions are in the, <clears throat> in the open space, the non-shaded region, and also on the dashed line. Those are not solutions as well. All right. That's it for 6C. Take care, everybody.